Today we're going to talk about partial fractions, specifically um, using partial fractions to um, integrate rational expressions that might otherwise be difficult to integrate. So we're going to start just talking about partial fractions um, outside the context of integration. And then we'll take a look at how we're going to use partial fractions um, um, in context. So uh, to start this idea, let's, let's think about we're adding two rational expressions together. They're two different linear denominators, right? And how we might add these two expressions up. So we are going to find a common denominator. So the common denominator is obviously x minus 1, x plus 2. So I have to multiply this term by x plus 2, uh, this numerator by x plus 2, and this numerator by x minus 1. Uh, when I do that, I have my common denominator. Then I distribute um, the 1 here and the 2 here. And when I do that, I can combine like terms, and I'll just end up with a 3x. So I take these two rational expressions, both with linear uh, denominators, and I get this result. Um, and, and notice what happened to the, the denominator. I went from two linear denominators to one quadratic denominator. And notice that I also increased the, uh, the power of x in the numerator. Right. So what we're going to talk about in terms of partial fractions is kind of reversing that process. So starting with, with a quadratic denominator and breaking that up into two different fractions, the partial fractions, that we could express as a sum that would still be equal to this original expression here. All right. So um, to do that, we could say, OK, well, if we know if we have a quadratic denominator and a linear numerator, then uh, the factored form of this is x minus 1, x plus 2, and we can separate those denominators out. And we know that we're going to have a constant in this numerator and a constant in this numerator. The question is, what are those going to be? Now, of course, we already know they're going to be 1 and 2 because this is the problem that we already looked at. Right? But in general, we want to know what are those two constants going to be. And to find that, uh, one way we could go about that is multiply through by the uh, the LCD, and when we do that, we end up with an expression that looks like this. Right? Now, this should be true for any and all x values. Right? So we're going to pick convenient x values that make it easy for us to solve for a and b. So if you look here, you might be able to guess at what those convenient x values are going to be. You can see here that if I make x equal negative 2, this entire term is 0, so the a term disappears. If I were to make, I'm sorry, if I were to make x equal to negative 2, yeah. And if I were to make x equal to 1, then this entire term would be 0, so the b term would disappear. So I'm going to choose those one after the other, all right? So I'm going to have, okay, let x equal negative 2. When I do that, this expression up here becomes this. I substitute negative 2 in. This entire a term disappears, and I end up with negative 6 on the left, and b times negative 3 on the right. So I get b is equal to 2. If I do the same thing, but this time let x equal 1, the b term is going to disappear. I can solve for a. And I end up with the partial fractions here that are equal to that original. And of course, Notice that here, in this case, we started with a quadratic denominator, and now we have two linear denominators. All right. So the logical question that you're probably asking yourself right now is, what's the point? All right. Why bother doing this? Well, to answer that question, think about the context of an integration problem. Imagine you had to integrate this with a quadratic denominator. That would be a pretty difficult uh, and in many cases, it would be a pretty difficult integration. But if we just have linear denominators, these are very easy integrations, right? We can just integrate these using uh, ln. So that makes, that makes it a much easier integration problem if we can uh, use partial fractions. Um, in, the next, uh, in the next set, uh, the next little video, we'll talk about kind of a shortcut method for achieving the same um, outcome. It's called the cover-up method. And we'll talk about that next.